if you don't feel like you're ready, I believe you. I got a lot of them pulling strings to the, the rope. They're wanting to go. And we have a preacher that want to preach. Isn't that good? Amen. That preacher that want to preach. Amen. You have to beg them to preach. They want to preach. Yes. And that's what the church was supposed to be all about. Amen. And he said, no, I'll do it. I said, well, you know, if you don't feel like you're prepared, you can do it later. But if you, I just thought it been Bill with me to call on you yes, for a night church. And he said, you just say the word and I'll, I'll do it. So Amen. here he is in all his glory. <laughs> <laughs> That's I've got about that. I am what I am. <laughs> oh, what I am. <laughs> can, it, can anybody see the strength coming back in this guy? Oh, I said, hey, you can, I mean, this time, you said this morning, how well, this time, this time. Something happened. happened. You can see it. You can see it happening. He's back. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I'm almost 56 years old. Oh, yeah. Or about, almost half as old as Daisy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and about, oh, about, about half. Uh, and yeah, I've been through lots of things that I never know that I would have went through. I've been through up and down and around and sickness and um, poor and had my life shut off and been without and done without and lost my mind and just been all around. But I found out one thing, that no matter where you are today, what's going on in your life, it'll be better with Jesus. You know, it'll be worse if you put him out of your life, and it'll be better if you keep him in. So we don't know what we're going to have to go through and suffer. The apostles suffered. Jesus suffered. So we don't know what we're going to have to go through, but if you keep God in the center of your life, it will be ever so much better. Amen. And that's what I found out. We learn by the things we suffer. And I found out, you know, I used to be, I taught Sunday school here. We were in church faithful for years and years, never missed a service. Had my whole family in church, yep. played in the band, traveled around the band, played the bass, did the camera, did all kinds of things, and I looked up and I was out. You know, it's just that one wrong, one wrong thought, one wrong action, no matter how much you think you're in, if you get wrong, you'll get out. And my, I, I went out because of sick, I got sick, and that changed my mindset. I forget who said this morning that you can't be sick in your body, Jennifer, I think, and not be depressed, right. or not have, not right. be bored at least, not be having to fight that thing. Right. And so I got sick in my body, got sick in my mind, and I went out. And then I started following the things of the world, and I got caught up in a whole bunch of stuff. And you know what? Going out in the world didn't make me any better. No. I'd seen doctors upon, my wife was working at St. Vincent, so we had like great insurance, we had um, to go to any doctor, St. Vincent, they had, you know, specialists upon specialists. Went to specialists for every such thing under the sun. Seen psychiatrists, seen rheumatologists, seen pulmonologists, seen God only knows what I've seen. I was on dozens of medications, been electric shocked, had them guys stick the needles in me and shock me. I mean, been through sleep studies, been through everything imaginable almost. Had final taps, had sleep studies, and none of that helped. No, no. I got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. I remember I seen Jennifer once in a while when I was out of church at Kroger's, and she said later on, you look so bad. You're like death warmed over. And I, that's how I was. I was death warmed it was. over. It was. And, you know, so going out in the world ain't going to help you, folks. No. Yeah. You know, going out there, there ain't no help out there. No. I'm being honest with you, because God don't want you out there. That's right. God wants you right here. Uh -huh. You are the body of Christ. Uh -huh. And when I come back to God, you know what? Then I went to doctor visits. Then I went to medication. Uh -huh. And I'm not saying that I'm 100% healthy, but I'm saying I'm a lot better than I used to be. And I'm not on anything but Jesus Christ. Tonight. He is our hope. He is our help. He is the one. He is the one. Yes, he is. And I found out something through that. When things come against us, it can push us out. Or we can make it push us in. Right. And I found out, you just dig in deeper. Dig in deeper. You just dig in deeper, push harder, push harder. be more determined. Yes. Yeah. You know, my mom lives right over here, and they, she lived over here for 55 years. A, li a little bit over because I'm 55. But anyway, nevertheless, when they moved in there, they had rose bushes across the front of the yard. And they was there for years and years. And I always loved them when my dad died and my mom got rid of the roses, cut them down, 
I mean, all roses are still smelled, you know? Yeah. You know, not the new stuff. It looks pretty and it can't smell now. The new roses really were fragrant. But nevertheless, she cut them all down. And it's been like a couple years ago. And she sprays them with poison, that stuff that kills weed. Keep it down. And they keep coming back up. <laughs> and so she cuts them down, sprays them again, and they come back up. Because they've been here for 55 years, and I tried to dig one up because I wanted one before she started killing them. And the roots are so deep Amen. and so thick that you can't even dig them up. So you can't kill them. She can kill the top of them. You can keep them killed off in the top, but she'll never kill the bottom. Oh, down on the other side. Down on the other side. Down on the other side. the street. Up in the neighbor's yard. Because the rooted and grounded deeper. And that's what we need to be. Rooted and grounded. So thanks for coming in, sir. They cannot destroy us. There's, there's one person here can I can destroy you, and that's you. Because the devil cannot do it. Jesus Christ will not do it. Only you. Your neighbor can't do it. But you can do it. So you got to keep yourself under subjection. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> God's so good, isn't he? He is good. God's awesome. And you know, who loved the revival? Oh, Wasn't yeah. it awesome? Yeah. And I think it, we're so blessed because we have continually, not just this revival, but for months and months, years and years, been blessed so much by receiving the richness of His Word and ministry time after time through various <laughs> ministers. Yeah. The Word here is so rich and good and true, and that's oh, what's important. Yes, it is. That's what, you know, I'm, I'm all for following God's Spirit. I'm all for praising God yeah. and worshiping Him. I'm all for that. I'm off for running the aisle, doing whatever. But the imperative thing is we receive His Word. Amen. Because there's not a famine for the Word going out, no. but there is a famine for the Word going in. Yeah. The Word can go out and you not receive one bit of it. Amen. You, have, you know, I'm hard of hearing. And that really hinders me in the natural. I can't watch TV unless it's close. I have to read. Who in here reads TV? <laughs> I have to read it. If it's not closed caption, I can't watch it. And if, if it is closed caption, you guys are looking at the pictures. Man, those are pretty pictures and stuff. You know what I'm doing? I'm reading the story. It hinders me. I can't see everything because I'm reading what's going on. I can't take it all in. And if someone's talking, you know, if ministers up here, I have to concentrate so hard on what they're saying to be able to hear, like Jennifer or um, <coughs> Sister Phyllis. I mean, I have to concentrate so hard that I get wore out just trying to listen. Sometimes, sometimes Katrina will go, Jerry, you're not listening to me. And I say, Katrina, I'm tired of listening. <laughs> yeah, which that, that really goes over well. <laughs> oh, she says, oh, okay. <laughs> but it's a truth because I have to exert such effort to try to hear what is being said. And you guys that can just hear without any effort at all, you're blessed. Amen. You're blessed. And if we're not careful, we'll get dull spiritually. Yes. Where God's trying to talk to us, and we're not hearing what He's saying. Amen. And we ought to concentrate more on what He's saying than what our wife's saying. And I'm really afraid of my wife. <laughs> but I'm more really concerned about what God's saying than about what she's saying. <laughs> right? Because she's just temporary. God's going to be great. That's right. That's right. I know she ain't going to be there, but that's going to be looking at me. Don't tell her he said that. <laughs> Don't tell her. Oh. You got it on tape. Well, she never watches these shows. Oh. This is the one. I'll recommend it. The big one. But it's the truth. <laughs> but, you know, my dad, I never I never loved on my dad, hugged my dad, and blubbered over my dad. And I, before he died, I got to t write him a letter and tell him how much I appreciated it, like what your, you did your dad how much I appreciated it, how he raised me, what he did for me, what he, he taught me. But I mean, I never blubbered on him and laid in his lap and hugged him and stuff all the time. But you know, I respected my dad and he knew I respected him. I honored my dad. I submitted myself to my dad's will. I was conscious of what my dad wanted. Good man. I had a mind towards my dad. And we need to do that towards God. It's, it's great to love on him and stuff, but we ought to respect him. Amen. We ought to honor him. We ought to honor, if we honor his word, we honor him. Yeah. Amen. If we give place to his word, 
we give place to him. That's right. Because he is the word of God. Right. Right. Yes, he is. So we need to be very careful that we really try to hear what God's trying to say. Amen. Amen. Because this is like a schoolhouse. Did you know this is like a schoolhouse? You Absolutely. guys know you're in school? Yeah. Absolutely. Because he taught them. The Bible says he taught, he taught them. them. Yeah. We're being taught. Mm -hmm. Good. If we want to do well, we have to listen. <coughs> uh, I'm going to just talk for a few minutes, about an hour and a half, no more than an hour and a half. <laughs> I haven't preached for a long time, so I'm going to get it. You know, one time I went to the dentist, because I had bad teeth when I was a kid, and one guy, he knew I wasn't going to come back, and I, he, he, I was there for like six hours because he decided he was going to get his money's worth while I was there. And I mean, I, I was in shock when I left. I mean, I, but that's why I did. You know, I preached for a long time. Don't know if I ever preach again. So I just get it all out tonight. You know? <laughs> Lucky for you, everybody went in here. So, so I can get it all out. You got to hear in 20 minutes. <clears throat> okay, Mark, the 12th chapter. Uh. Not Mark the perfect man, wherever he is, but Mark the 12th chapter, uh, 28 through 33. Oh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our, our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Amen. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than a whole burnt offering and sacrifices. <clears throat> now, what's the first commandment? Zero oh, Israel, the Lord our God, is one Lord, Lord. and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, heart all thy mind, all, all thy soul, and, and all thy strength. strength. <laughs> there is none other greater than those. Right. Now, why do you think he didn't say, Love the Lord thy God with part of your heart, part of your mind, part of your soul, and part of your strength. Say perhaps half. Why can't we just love him with half our mind, half our soul, half our strength, and half our heart? <clears throat> well, there must be a reason. Because all scripture is given, there's a reason for all, every word in this Bible. Who in here has read the whole Bible through? Raise, seriously, raise your hand if you read the Bible all the way through. <clears throat> well, I would, I would suggest that everybody in here read the Bible all the way through because every scripture is given for our prophet. It's in there. It says every scripture, even all the begats. Somehow, I don't know. That's important. If, if nothing else than just honoring God by reading through it, you get into numbers and Deuteronomy and stuff, and there's pages and pages and pages of people that I can't even pronounce. You know, there ain't no Georges and, and stuff in the Old Testament. You know, it's all these words that I can't even pronounce. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's important. Chapter 2, and Ezra if, was there if, this week. Watch we call it. There could be something in here, but well, I guarantee you there's something in here that you need for your life at one time or another. And if, and if it's in here, but you don't know it, it's not in here for you. And there are times we got to stand on the Word. And the only thing we got to stand on is the Word. Like people in here have said, you get all kinds of bad reports, and if if you don't want to receive it, you got to have something. When I think buffets you, oh, yeah. you got to have something to stand, stand upon. On the yeah, Everybody in here, at one time or another, is in a battle. Yeah. You know, God gives every one of us what? <laughs> what does Major. God give every one of us? Major faith. Free will. Major faith. Faith. Major faith. Major faith. Major. God gives everyone, everyone, a measure of faith. Amen. That is your spiritual ground. <laughs> God gives you spiritual ground. For you to build upon, Hallelujah. for you to expand on, yes. Amen. or for you to give up on, uh -huh. and for you to walk away from. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's yours. Yeah. Now what you do with it is up to you. That's right. You know, I watch a lot of old westerns. Anybody watch westerns? Love them. That's about all you watch on TV anymore, old westerns. Yes. <laughs> and when the pioneers had land, they had to fight Indians. 
They had to fight cattle rustlers. They had to fight bad guys. They had to fight drought. They had to fight everything. But they, if they wanted their land, they had to fight for it. If you want what God has for you, you have to stand up at some time in your life. Brother Pat can't stand up for you. Your wife can't stand up for you. You have to stand up for you and fight for what's yours. It's yours if you'll fight for it. But when you were out in the world, the devil didn't care nothing about you because you were his and you were going to do his will. But once you come to God and receive of God, then the devil's very concerned about you, and he's going to do everything possible to stop you. Yes. And he will steal you and kill, steal from you and kill you if you allow him. But he has no power over you unless you give it to him. Amen. It's your land, but don't think he's going to say, well, that's okay. You can have your land. That's fine. No, he won't. I'll bother her. Oh, no. He wants what's yours. He wants what's mine. And we have to stand up for it. And if we do stand up for it, guess what? He's defeated. He don't have no power over you unless you allow him to. So if you stand up for yourself, here comes John Wayne. Here comes John Scott. Here comes the cavalry. God will not leave us defenseless. God will absolutely send the cavalry to rescue us if we will just stand Amen. upon his word and stand upon our ground. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Nevertheless, God did not say half of our mind, half of our soul, half of our strength, and half of our so, so. understanding, so spirit. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I've always thought, <clears throat> I have another lesson I'm not going to get into tonight, a teaching, but you know, when God talks about loving with all your heart, do you think He really means take out your <laughs> and say, Here, no. when I say I love my love, I say I love my wife with all my heart, I'm not talking about that thing that pushes blood around my body. What am I talking about? I'm talking about my, my feelings, my emotions. Okay, well, that's what God's talking about. He's not concerned about you loving Him with your blood producing organ. He's wanting you to love him with your feelings and emotions. Right. To the spirit, yeah. have feelings for God. <clears throat> <clears throat> and with all I sow, I know, um, that you're a spiritual man. Right. That's right. And with all your mind, well, some of us, that's not very much. <laughs> but nevertheless, he wants it. And that's our, that's our understanding, our intellect. Right? Right. So he wants he wants you to emotionally love him. He wants you to love him with your spirit. He wants you to love you with your understanding and yeah. with uh, all of your strength, which is our natural. Yeah. You know, it takes some natural strength to do things. Yes, to come does. to church. It sure does. But he see if we don't love him with all of that, if we love God with half of all that, what are we doing with the other half? Right. Sure now, does. I'll say this. This is something that, that we try to do. Growing too. Like most things in life, we're not able to do 100%, 100% of the time. Like Pastor says, sometimes we got it real good, sometimes we kind of got it, and sometimes we ain't got it at all. That's right. And I found that to be true. But if we ain't got it at all and you're still trying, you still got something. That's right. Because God will accept that and make up the difference. Yes, it's all an effort. Hallelujah. It's all an effort. When he's saying love him with all those things, he knows, Brother Bobby, that's not always going to be that's right. way out here, 100%. That's right. Sometimes it's going to be 1%. Uh -huh. But if you only got 1% and you're loving him with 1%, guess what? That's all. Uh -huh. that's Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. If you only got 1% and you still love him with all that, you love him with all of it. Uh -huh. So whether it's 100 or 1, the thing is to do it with all of it. Amen. Now, if, if we do it with all of it, then we've not left any of it for anybody else. Somewhere else, yeah. Because if you leave some of it for somebody else, then you're going to have problems. Because if you love God with half your mind, then half your mind is open to all kinds of other stuff. That's right. Fill it up with And there's all kinds of other stuff out there. That's true. Oh, yeah. Now, I got a wife tonight that should be in church, and she'll, she'll tell you she should be in church. Before I come to church, I said, you're going to go to church tonight? Yeah. I said, I went home there. I said, well, Pastor, when he called me, I said, Pastor asked me to minister. And I said, oh, I'm going to go. 
Does I already decide I'm going to go? But I'm going to now I'm really going to go. Well, where's she at? Something out. Now, being honest with you, Something because out. she knows. And but see, she's not loving God with all of her mind because right now there's a battle in her mind. And before I walked out tonight, she said, "I really need to go to the doctor and get something because for this anxiety." Well, I'll tell you exactly what she needs for this anxiety. Jesus. She's right there with Brother Robinson. Yep. Now, how can I say that? That's hard. Oh, yeah, really? Well, you have to have to do that for himself. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And because I understand that now, it's easy for me. She don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She don't want to hear that. No. But see, I know where her help's at. I know absolutely where her help's at. Right. Not in doctor, and it's not in pills. That's right. It's Amen. in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. That's right. Now, if, if we love the Lord with half of our mind, half of our strength, of our, so, I know this script. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Heart and soul. What are we? If we love him, whether it's one percent or hundred percent, if we love him with half of it, what are we? Anybody want to guess? Then I'm real good about guessing. Then I can say something about you. Lukewarm. But if you love somebody with half of something, what are you? Lukewarm. 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 Amen. No. Half-hearted. 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 What? Okay. What did they first call people at Antioch? Christians. 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 So what are we? Christians. If, we're Christians. if we're following Christ, what are we supposed to be? Christians. We're, we're Christians. Well, if you're only serving God halfway, what are you? Half Christians. You're halfway Christian. Okay? Anybody want to be a halfway Christian? No. Now, I got a little demonstration. This may work out good. This may not work out too good, because I tried this before I left home, and it didn't work out too good. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, I, I tried it coming over. No. I got, I got to take care of this. Some of you guys, some of you guys in the front row may want to get insurance. Oh. Now, I tried this at home. But now, the idea behind this is if you're serving God halfway, you're a halfway Christian. Okay? Now, I tried this at home, but like, I haven't done a yo-yo in 25 or 30. I mean, 55 years old. Probably been 50 years since I've done a yo-yo. And so I tried it at home. I could do it a couple times. Tried it coming walking to church tonight, and the thing separated, and the yo-yo went. Uh -huh. down the street. So, we'll try this. Anybody in here a yo-yo expert? Are you really? Uh, sort of. Uh, huh? Are you a yo-yo expert? Can you do the yo-yo? He's young. He's you want to do it? He's young. He's a yo-yo. If I kill somebody, you're going to be sad that you didn't get it. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't that be awful for everything we've had to suffer through and everything? We've got to go with through. Yo -yo. Brother Jerry, take somebody out tonight. <laughs> <with a> yo -yo. <laughs> I can't believe they got through this, they got through the war, they got through whatever. I'm going to look at it in the war. Let's go to the other side of my shirt. We're not going to kill the yo yo. Oh, Jesus. It's not funny to actually kill somebody. Are you going to pass out a helmet? Here we go. Here we go. Now, this is all about being a halfway Christian. Okay, all right. Anybody see that? Anybody blink? <laughs> so yeah, no one. Okay. Hey. Now, yeah, it's, it's easy if you just know what you're doing. Unfortunately, I never know what I was doing. Okay, now, that's what a yo yo is supposed to do, right? Amen. You spin it down, it comes back up. You really know what you're doing. You can do all kinds of tricks. But here's the point. That's what a yo-yo is supposed to do. Right. It's only doing what it's supposed to do. Right. Amen. Okay, what it was meant to do. Right. What it was made to do. Right. The only yeah. thing it's supposed to do in the whole wide world. Oh, now, <laughs> what is it? What's it doing now? Nothing. Nothing. What is it doing? Nothing. No, it's not. Not doing, I'll tell you what it's doing. It's hanging there. It's not doing anything. Right. Because this is half of a yo-yo. This is a yo. It's a yo. No, yo. Is it not just a yo? Yeah, it's a yo. Yo, yo. Okay, now, I want you to picture this to keep in mind we're talking about being half a Christian. Right. Now, how good 
is half of a yo-yo. It's just a yo. It's not no good. It doesn't work anymore. It's ineffective. Okay, it's inactive. Now it's just a dead weight. Now remember we're talking about being half of something. Half of a yo-yo is just dead weight. Now, how long do you think? Now, play, play with the yo-yo, especially if you know what you're doing. It's kind of fun. But just carrying this around all day long, now how long do you think I'm going to do this? I'm going to do this just dead weight. I'm going to take it off. Say, this ain't no fun. I'm going to cast it from you. Now, we're talking about being a half of something. Now, half of a yo-yo is not any good. Now, don't judge me on this, okay? Because I'm not saying this in a mean way. But half of a Christian is not as good as a whole Christian. Come on. Okay. Now, to be any good, I've got to do something with this yo. <laughs> I've got to take this yo, and I either I'm going to softly wait and forget about it, but if I'm mindful of it, and who knows that God's mindful of his people. Yes, he is. When Brother Jerry was out there in my bed of infirmity, far from God, far out of God's will, messed up so bad that I didn't know if I was coming again. I mean, I thought about this. I mean, it's, it's, it's awful to lose your mind. Even if you don't have, even if you have a little one, it's still bad to lose it. And when I was on my bed of infirmity, separated from the body of God, physically, God was still mindful. What does the Bible say he'll do? He'll leave the 90 and 9. He always do it. He always do it. He was doing it. He was doing it. So what did God do? He'll be all right. I'll be back. And he went and found Brother Jared. He said, come on, little lost-heart-headed sheep. Come on, stubborn, bull-headed dummy. Let's get back in. God is mindful. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never protect you. I, I have one of the best wives in the whole world which she wants to be. But when she don't want to be, she is hard-headed, stubborn, my God, Lord have mercy. No, no. But, that yo. No. She doesn't mean to do something here. She makes me young. I may have a little bit to do with that. But the thing of it is that, you know what? Even in her condition now, God's still mindful of her. Oh, right. I mean, he's still going to make a way. Yeah. But it seems it to be no way. I don't think So God's still mindful. I'm still mindful of this show. Yeah. <laughs> so what am I going to do with it? Yeah. Uh, You're going to add to it. You're going to work with it. You're going to add to it. You're going to add to it. Work with well, you do. Actually, you know, she's very right because I tried this. Now, when it comes apart, there's just a little string around a little thing there. A little yeah. arm. Right <laughs> Axle. And you know what? You can do this all day because they don't tighten up. Right. So you have to mess with it. You have to kind of get your finger there yeah. and kind of loop it around and, and then loop it two or four times and then tighten it up. So you're very right. You have to absolutely work, work with it. it. Yeah. Well, you know, God has to absolutely work with us sometimes. Amen. Amen. He did me. But now see, if I work with this right and I know what I'm doing, then I've taken something that was worthless, yeah. that once had some worth, that become worthless, because it was half of what it was supposed to be, and I made it back to what it yo -yo. should be. Yo -yo. Yo -yo. Now, God does the absolutely great same thing to us. If, now see this, this yo yo doesn't have any um, will, conscience, no will, no conscience. It, it can't make any decision. If I want to fix it, I'll fix it. Now, but we, we have free will. Yes, we do. Yes, yes, free will. Right. So, God's willing, but guess who else has to be willing? We do. We do. We do. Yes. We do. Absolutely, we do. But if we'll submit ourselves, if we'll just come back to God with a contrite, broken spirit, God can absolutely, I know this in my own self, take you and bind up your wounds yes, and did. pour oil over you That's and anoint right. you and raise you even if you're dead God can raise you if he wants to you can be spiritually cold, hard enough to none of that matters to 
God, you are bright and shining. I mean, it's like, he can, he can see you. He said, David said, even though I'm in my bed in hell, thou art there. Yeah. We're not hidden. Oh, we're, I think we're open before God. Yeah. God, out, He knows our hearts. No, sure, yeah. He knows our thoughts. Yeah. So God can absolutely take you, no matter what your situation is, and make you absolutely what He wants you to be if you're willing to lie. Amen. And then, now I'm not a master yo-yo guy, but you know what? You work with the more I do this, you should have seen the first couple of times I did it at home. <laughs> the more I do this, the better I get at it. Yeah. Right? The more we allow God to work with us, you're around the world. The better you get. Yes. You're around the world. Can you do it around the world? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, really. The yeah. more, more yeah, God works with us. Yeah, do the cat in the cradle. Huh? Come on, around the world. Yeah. Around the world, right? You know, Tommy Smothers, you know, Tommy Smothers does go Yeah, he does. Yeah. I've seen you ever seen him do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he does all kinds of little. Oh yeah, I knew a guy that did that. He was a uh, he did yeah. very good, very good. Yeah. If we'll submit ourselves to God, if we'll humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, He will absolutely, absolutely bring us back. Even if it's a brother Pat preached one of the greatest messages for me, and a, a smoking flax he will not quench, a bruised weed he will not break. Right. Right. Even if it's just a little, you know, even if it's just a little ember. Yes. In you. His hand. The fan. little teeny Fans ember. in his hand. God knows how to fan it, blow on it, and bring it back to life to it with a raging fire. And, you know, by loving it with all our mind, heart, and soul, and strength, we're leaving ourselves open to do absolutely what He wants to do in our life. You know, God's awesome. God is really awesome. And we, and we are so blessed in what we receive here. I mean, the blessings of God is pouring in this place. And I'm just so thankful for everything God's done. Thankful that Pastor asked me to minister tonight. You know, this is this is this is important. Amen. Talking to God's people, I don't know what could be more important Amen. than ministering the Word of God to God's people. Amen. I love everybody here. Thank God.